All right, Ms. Palmer here. Just going to quickly run through um, first of all more lossless compression. So make sure you go over what yeah, that intro to lossless compression from the last um, video. All right. Uh, while I'm waiting for you to go over your notes, I actually watched this Super Saiyan God stuff today. It's a bit rubbish in it compared to the original cartoons. But hey, here we go. All right. So dictionary based compression. All right. Basically, what we're looking at in this video is how does dictionary based compression work. So. If you remember the original definition of compression that I gave to you in the first video, well, we're just going to add to it basically by reminding ourselves that loss comp lossless compression is reversible, all right, when the accuracy um, is important because we want to preserve that original meaning of the data. So uh, a bit of history, and this happened in lots of different um, wars uh, where spies used a common book to basically send secret messages to each other because the two spies knew the common book that uh, they were going to use. So one of them would create a cipher by just generating a page number, a line number, and the number words in from the left to the right. Then the guy at the other end would then be able to use the same book to recreate the message. Okay, and that's in essence, that's what dictionary-based uh, compression is doing, where basically, um, if you receive the compressed file, you're gonna identify patterns that match uh, the dictionary, and you can replace the patterns in the data with the dictionary references, and therefore, you can return the information back to its original form, yeah? So, um, now, if we're thinking about this whole thing about dictionary, well, basically, first of all, imagine that we're only dealing with words, right? So, we got two different methods which we can use to um, create this dictionary. The first one is what is called what we call a concordance, right? So, that's unique to the actual text that we're working with. Uh, we examine that text, we extract all the unique patterns uh, within it, all the different unique words, and then that's our concordance because we've just created a dictionary, right? The other way, is um, if, say, for example, I don't know, I'm working for the Vatican, all right, and we're going to compress all of our old Latin text or whatever it is. So we would scan through all these texts, we would pass them, and we would basically figure out all the patterns that are in there, and we would create a dictionary. So then anytime we want to compress a file, we would replace the patterns within that file with the patterns from our with our, with our dictionary references from the pre-built dictionary. So you can imagine how that would be, for example, something that Amazon would do, where they would have a pre-built dictionary, um, and then that would therefore make um, their ebooks that they publish smaller in size because they would not have to transmit a huge dictionary with each book, okay? Because the, the actual dictionary would be stored within the software, um, the Kindle software, whatever it is that they're using, okay? So uh, let's use the first technique as an example, all right? And let's actually see how that works. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through my uh, passage, okay? So as I go through my text, I basically find all the unique patterns. They're stored there in that first column of um, my table. Uh, each of those patterns has a dictionary reference. So two is zero, swinging is two, and then rhyming is the ninth unique pattern that was found and has a reference of eight. Okay. As I've only got 13 unique patterns, I can use a nibble uh, to store uh, each of those uh, references because it, there's uh, not that many references involved in that passage. So basically my passage now looks something like this okay the text has been turned into in essence a, a bunch of binary strings which it was anyway but they're now smaller binary strings so therefore if we think about we're comparing now the original to the um, compressed text you can see the original it was 155 characters so transmitting by ASCII 155 bytes if it was Unicode uh, could be 310 uh, if I compare it to my compressed text now, there's 41 patterns in there, so uh, that would be 20 and a half bytes, all right? So we're just rounding it up to 21 bytes, plus my dictionary of 61 bytes gives me a total of 82 bytes for transmission, which is much, much smaller than the original, 855 bytes, or, well, it's not much, much smaller, but it's smaller than. And you can imagine if it was Unicode, obviously, it'd be much smaller. So... Um, you should have an idea now of how dictionary-based compression is working there by extracting the patterns, then replacing the original data with uh, dictionary references.